Greetings from the Pacific Northwest. One way to lift our spirits in these trying times is to grow some flowers. Just walking outside in the fresh air and looking at flowers that you have grown will elevate your mood and reduce your stress. So let us proceed to make this flower bouquet just for you. We are going to grow zinnia flowers pretty much like we grow lettuce. Here is a growing map. To get in the proper mood, let's replace the head of lettuce with a zinnia flower. Zinnia seedlings will be planted in net pots resting above a tank of nutrient solution. As the plants grow and the nutrient solution is depleted, a moist air zone forms and oxygen roots develop in this zone. The lower roots gather water and nutrients and are suspended in the remaining nutrient solution. No pumps or mechanical aeration will be needed. Water was added to an 18 gallon plastic storage container. It was filled to about 2 inches from the top. Hydroponic fertilizer was added to the water. I like to add the fertilizer in the form of two stock solutions. Stock solution A consists of one pound of the master blend fertilizer plus one half pound of magnesium sulfate dissolved in one gallon of water which will be added at 20 milliliters per gallon 300 milliliters of stock solution A is added to 15 gallons of water. Stock solution B consists of one pound of solution grade calcium nitrate dissolved in one gallon of water, which will be added at 20 milliliters per gallon. 300 milliliters of stock solution B is added to 15 gallons of water. The other option is to follow the manufacturer's label and add 36 grams of Master Blend Fertilizer plus 18 grams of magnesium sulfate plus 36 grams of calcium nitrate per the 15 gallons of water. It might be useful to test the pH of your water with a pH test indicator solution. Oh my, the pH of the water is quite alkaline and needs to be adjusted. This pH down solution will lower the pH of the nutrient solution, but be careful, it is quite acidic. I would like to see the pH of the nutrient solution to be somewhere in the range of 5.5 to 7. It looks like we're okay now. Usually you have to add about one half to one milliliter of the pH down per gallon of growing solution. Zinnias were germinated in seedling box and transplanted into net pots. My net pots were three inches long. They're not generally available, so you'll probably end up having to use these common two-inch net pots. The lower portion of the net pots was immersed in nutrient solution. Since the net pots were three inches deep, blank seedling blocks were added to take up space. Seedling blocks were then transplanted into the net pots. As an option, seedlings could be directly germinated in net pots filled with a potting medium containing such materials as peat and perlite. The water and fertilizer have been added and the seedlings have been transplanted. Now it's time to just sit back and wait for the flowers. Two weeks have passed and the plants are growing. We have a little situation here. The plants were being grown outdoors because I expected dry weather. Well, it rained and raised the solution level and started to drown the plants. So an overflow hole was drilled in the container and the plants were happy again. The plants are growing but several of the net pots have different types of plants. I wonder what they are. The zinnias are growing well but so are the weeds. But I'm going to just wait a while and see what they turn into. Oh great joy! My first flowers! But those weeds have just gone bonkers. Four days later and more flowers have developed. And they actually, they look pretty good amongst those weeds. It's decision time. I'm just going to go ahead and cut out those big weeds. The flowers are saying, I feel so free now. Why did you wait so long to cut those nasty intruders? Here's a little tour of the zinnias. 
There's some white flowers, which I think are centurias, which somehow managed to sneak in there. I can count at least 17 zinnia flowers in this shot. How many do you see? The weather has been pretty dry for over a month now, and the lawn is dried up. So I placed this container of flowers on the lawn. This is quite a contrast, isn't it? In this little tour, you can see that the flowers are very colorful and healthy. I normally place a solution level indicator in my hydroponic tanks, but somehow I neglected to do it. A rather primitive way to find out how much solution is remaining in the container is to lift it. Ooh, it feels a little bit light. Here it is 72 days after transplanting and I haven't added any water or fertilizer or done anything excepting enjoy the flowers. I wanted to add about an inch of water which would be about a gallon. The least disruptive way to add the water was to slowly drip it in through an irrigation emitter connected to the watering bottle. Future additions of either water or nutrient solution were made as needed through a one quart bottle. I should have set up an automatic watering float valve apparatus for this project. My curiosity is just killing me. I've got to look at the roots. Oh wow. This is way better than the graphic of the roots on my t-shirt. Let's take a closer look at the roots. They're just marvelous. And there's not very much nutrient solution remaining in the container. The vast majority of the roots are oxygen roots growing in the large moist air zone. I'm being very careful because I don't want to injure the roots. New flowers continue to develop as time marches on. I fashioned a makeshift support for the stems with this board and ribbon. New side shoots continued to form, followed by bud formation and flower opening. Yes, zinnias can develop new flowers for an extended period of time. I would like to conclude this video with a little poem. Beautiful zinnia flowers are yellow and orange and red. My new t-shirt is blue. I grew this beautiful bouquet of zinnia flowers especially just for you. <laughs>